Good morning. Welcome to the Seneca County Commissioner meeting, June 9th, 10 a.m. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So you're a Democrat or Republican. I ask you to join us. <coughs> Please join me a short prayer here. Dear Lord, we come to you again. You said, knock and the door shall be opened. We are asking for your assistance today in helping us make decisions that are in the best interest of those that we serve. We ask, as always, in a very special way, that you protect those people that are protecting our freedoms and their families. We ask all this through your Son. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Commissioner Perdiesel. Here. Commissioner Schaff? Here. Commissioner Kirsten? Present. I will entertain a motion to accept the digital audio video recording of the previous board session from Thursday, June 2nd. Uh, regular meeting. So moved. And I will second. Commissioner Kirsten? Yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Fredisel? Yes. So we'll jump right in to the uh, first item on the agenda Richland County Building Department. Uh, welcome. Thanks for driving up. Uh, you can come up here. The floor is yours. Please uh, introduce where, yourself where, for the record. Where, where do you? Where, 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 we're standing in this here. corner. I or, stand like here. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> well, we're right. not getting a podium. <laughs> That's our podium for now. But thanks for coming up. All right. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm Kara Russell, the director of the Richland County Building Department, um, and Ken Arthur is our building official. He's also one of our inspectors. Um, welcome. Richland County Building Department handles commercial um, building permits and inspections for Seneca and Tiffin. Um, so that's why we're here today, just to give you an update on our department, some things that have happened in the past couple years in general. Um, we are working, um, currently we are working on, and this isn't gonna be up in the next month or so, but we're currently working on new software for our department so that we can better track the permits and look up information for people but also part of that then will be the ability for um, full online submittals for, for the for the permitting process so that people won't have to travel down or mail in things to Richland County they'll be able to submit electronically for their building permits so it's one of the things that we're working on we do currently have an electronic submittal process for certain smaller projects um, that people can call in and ask if they can utilize that process and we can do that. Um, so we have that to help. Um, things have gotten a little busy in the past two months. Um, we hired a new plans examiner about a year and a half ago. Um, and since we've had the new plans examiner on board, in general, we've had our review times down to more like the 20 days for, for plan reviews. Um, sometimes as short as 14, but it averages right around 20. However, um, about two months ago, we had a period of, of four to six weeks where we had just a ton of people wanting to get their projects and it turned nice. It went from cold and rainy to warm and sunny. So everybody submitted projects at the same time. So we are currently right at the 30 day review time. However, um, I think once we get through this week, I was looking at our shelves and stuff like that. Um, with what we have coming up on the shelves, we're going to be at about 20 days here just at the end of this week and then hopefully be able to stick to that, back to that level. Um, our review process is the same for submit new submittals and resubmittals. Um, state law requires we take those, review them in the order in which they are received. So we have to do them in, in the order that they come in. So. Um, we have a, a queue of shelves with all the drawings on them. Um, Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah. Is a reason, uh, what's a reason metal? So, um, is that a change? You mean there's a change? It ladder? could be a change. Yeah. That's um, so. Part of the permitting process is when you submit, um, <coughs> specifically for commercial projects, um, you can get a correction letter which says, here's the items you need to address that aren't code compliant and you can't start your work yet because these things are serious items that we need to know. Um, but we also have conditional permits where- Is a correction letter different than a resubmittal? Um, well, you would resubmit with both a correction letter or with a conditional permit, which is 
you need to address these items because they are not code compliant, but you can get started with your project. So does state law require on a correction letter that you go back to the bottom of the line? Yes. So if you're 30 days out? Yes. So you're in the same queue with new submittals? Um, with resubmittals? Correctly, yes. Okay. We, we, te yeah. my we technically okay. have two separate sets of shelves with the new submittals and the resubmittals. Okay. Um, and so sometimes like um, Ken has gone and gotten his plans examining certificates. So sometimes if Ken doesn't have as many inspections, he'll be able to pull things off the resub shelf um, to just go through and make sure that those items have been addressed because we don't do a full review when it's a resubmittal. We just review, these are the items that you didn't have correct. These are the only items that we check, unless you're saying that there's a change to a project, like we had to make it bigger or something like that. Okay. So we do do that. Um, so sometimes those might go a little faster, but um, in general, we try to, they, they, they're supposed to be at the same time frame. But with the fact that we have Ken that can do plan reviews as well, um, he does those resubmittals, so sometimes. And like if we get something in where you might be almost complete with the project and you only had one small thing like signs or something and those come in, we might be able to get to that and just get those so that we can get you a full approval type thing. But in general, it's supposed to go in that order. So, so one, of, one of the things during plan review, if there's a couple minor items, I will call the design professional and say, hey, can you email this information to me, you know, and, and I'll put it on the... While it's open and you're Exactly. On I'll put it on the... I'll okay. say, you know, if I don't hear from you in a week, then I will send it out as a, a, a okay. conditional yeah. approval or, or something like yeah. that. We don't issue a lot of correction letters because typically there's enough information that we can work with so that the people can get started. But um, a lot of times when the plans come in, there are things that are missing and, or, you know, misidentification. And so, you know, I'll literally reach out to those design professionals or the builder and say, hey, if you can get this to us, we can get it out as full approval or something like that. So that it doesn't have to go to the end of the line again, you know, it, it, it can be reviewed and out. Anybody have any questions right now? Yeah, yeah. How many total inspectors do you have as far as going out and boots on the ground, I guess? We have, we have three inspectors, I'm one of them, and uh, we all have dual certifications. We have multiple certifications, so we're not sending, uh, typically the things that need to be looked at on a project are plumbing, which the local health Here, departments, Erie County, Erie County does you guys, but uh, <coughs> Richland County has Richland County doing them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't do the plumbing, but then there's, there's building, electric, HVAC, mm -hmm. and you know, sprinkler and fire alarm, which a lot of the local jurisdictions. So the inspectors that go out are, are uh, certified to do the building, electrical, and the mechanical inspections. So we're not sending three people out we're not coordinating three people, you know, so a, a, a building owner or something has to be there all day waiting for the different trades. Okay. We're, co we're covering that all. Another thing that we've done in the past couple years is we've added a day to this county. So we're here up in, in uh, the Tiffin area, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, which it, it was previously Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that was one when I was going to talk about the inspections next. We implemented that about six to eight months ago as a trial to see what happens if we had did all of our, because we handle five counties, if we did all of our counties on the same day, which is Wednesday right now, how it would work out. Um, so it's our trial run to see how it is working. It seems to be working really well where we're not running into a lot of problems handling the wide range of, of loads on that day. and. and and um, so then the plan is is to then open up to all five of our counties all five days. Um, since that seems to be going well, we haven't um, talked with the inspectors to verify that everything's okay yet, but we're kind of at the end of that period. So I don't have an update for you on it's 100% that we're gonna do it. That was the plan if everything seems to go well with the one day, which it does seem, because I know that's another concern. But we do also work with um, projects like for foundations and things especially if we've already been out to a project once to work with them for pictures and stuff if they call in and talk to us and say hey I need to get this foundation for today you're not in the area can I take pictures and send them to you and you can approve them that way so we do have some other options in place right now but again we're looking at opening that up to five days a week 
do you feel right. that th do you feel that three inspectors is good enough to cover five counties, or do you look to uh, hire more people? I mean, what's your where's your threshold or comfort zone? Okay, so typically, uh, you know, with driving and things like on that order, eight locations a day per inspector, you know, is is a pretty good load. We can do twelve a day, so you know that. That right there is between 24 and 36 locations, not inspections, but locations. So we feel at this time we're adequately staffed. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other things that the pandemic has taught us all is you can do things remotely, you can do things virtually, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that has helped in when there's a situation where hey, we mm -hmm. we need yeah. an, a, we need something looked at, and it's not the day we inspect. We'll work with them on that. So. That you know, in the past couple years, we've done more of that. Other than days that we have, that our inspectors are at training because they do have continuing education that they have to do um, every year, with the exception of those days that they have the training, we have not. I don't think we've ever, in the past three years, had to push like say you can't have an inspection that day because we're full. Um, you know, just with the three inspectors. Um, at least not that I can remember. Um, you know, sometimes we'll call and say, hey, we're up in that area today. Can we hit it today instead of tomorrow or something just to make things easier? But yeah. um, we haven't ever been full on inspections. Are, are you are, just, uh, just a general question. This is my own mere curiosity. Are you guys allowed to Zoom or FaceTime? I mean, if, if you have an inspection and they're two hours away, are they able to show you, hey, via phone or internet? Hey, here's what we've done. Or here, are you allowed to do that, or do you have to be there in person to get those approvals? Okay, it, it depends on what it is, frankly. Okay. The other thing that uh, the virtual has taught me is there's a lot of times you don't pick up everything. It's not ideal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so reputable contractors, uh, jobs we're familiar with, we're not. You know, it's not our first time there. We can work with them on the phone. You know, if if need to, you know, we have we have a smartphone. They can send us pictures. We can text back. We can call them, communicate directly with them. You know, if there is a situation like that. So we did do completely virtual inspections, with exception with the rare exceptions there the first couple months of the pandemic, and that's where where Ken's talking about where we do have some experience with that. That some things they work very well with a virtual, and some things you would think that they would work well but it's better to be there in person to make sure connections are tight and stuff like that but again if it's something like we're not going to be at the spot until later and you need to pour you could do it virtually or look at the pictures now and then we can still stop by and look at it in person but it's not necessarily holding up you know we we try to to do that kind of thing and and work with the contractors sometimes it's just something that we can't because we haven't been to a site before and we haven't seen them or something like that we're like we really need to come see it in person but um, we do try to work with them yeah so for example if, if there's a if there's a footing a lot of times on larger projects as part of the architect or engineers design there's a third party inspector who will test the soils who will look at rebar placement that is not instead of us it's in addition to us but a lot of times we'll work with that you know, we'll go there and we meet the person that is doing the inspections. And some of the larger buildings, they may be pouring foundations for two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. You know, so we'll, you know, the. We'll do the pictures. Then. Yeah. Okay, Karen, Ken, thank you for coming today. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate Good. it. Karen was kind enough to send me numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you brought any permit numbers or dollars. Um, or I just have the same stuff that I sent mm -hmm. you, but yes. Okay, yeah, so the, so the rest of them can see what's going on. So the elephant in the room. Uh, we have had um, this conversation with mm -hmm. Richland over the last eight years, three or four times. Uh, each time we've had some very major concerns with some of the larger contractors um, uh, about the length of time permitting takes, about the change orders that are requested that can't get done in a timely fashion, that, that uh, they feel projects are slowed down because of the fact that they're not getting um, requests answered quickly um, so this has been and there's been a change of personnel uh, at your location uh, we, we had a two or three years ago it was uh, how long have you been there Kara 
Um, about three. Yeah. Sure, uh, three years ago then, you know, we had a situation where there was virtually no response uh, when we attempted to get somebody in here. Uh, Carrie, you've been very responsive every time I've called, and I appreciate that. However, there is mounting frustration with the contractors. Uh, and, you know, we have looked at and continue to look at partnering with Sandusky County folks to uh, try to get that done. Not related to you, but Fostoria is a little bit con uh, concerned about Wood County as well. So we were talking about combining all those into one. Uh, I guess the thing that the thing that uh, is a concern to me is that the all, typically the only time we hear from Richmond County is when we start to bitch. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, audience. When we start to complain. Sure. Um, and uh, but but we get in the, in the interim. I wouldn't say weekly, but I would say monthly phone calls from builders or contractors saying, can't you guys do something for us? Can't mm -hmm. you help us <coughs> expedite this process? Through the winter, you don't hear much, right? <coughs> but this time of year, yes. as you guys uh, get busier, that, that's when we start to get the phone call. So mm -hmm. um, again, I, you guys have been cooperative as far as I'm concerned mm -hmm. when it comes to getting the numbers to us of late. But you know, it's kind of a definition of insanity here. You know, we talk to you, things get better. Uh, six months pass and we start getting the contractor calls again. Mm -hmm. We talk to you, things get better and, you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Sure. So, uh, I, I don't know that there's any salvation uh, at this point if we have uh, a decent bid from Sadusky County. And I, and I don't know what you can promise that, uh, you know, that you're able to do because history has mm -hmm. shown that that, that it happens and, and it, it gets better for a little bit and then falls back. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sure. That's and it. we're always going to have the spring is always going to be a problem, for lack of a better term, a problem when it comes to plant reviews. Um, because of the spring, you know, the April, May is when everybody gears up for the, the season, basically. Well, the, big, the um, biggest complaint that I get, so, uh, and I don't know about the other two gentlemen, but the biggest complaint that I get is that the initial plans typically are approved in a decent amount of time, but then there are some changes, um, and they're in the middle of the project, and they, they have to quit the project, or they have to stand mm -hmm. down for too long a period of time, which causes them a problem, which obviously causes the owners a problem. That's the typical complaint. Okay. Um, <coughs> typically, if we like know of anything where it's like we can't move forward till it's straightened up, you know, we try to work with them. I mean, we have limits on what we can do, but um, I, at least as far as we've ever been made aware with a project, I don't know if there's been any projects that they've told us that, you know, we're stuck here until this has been reviewed. Um, I, I know that we've had some that were recently and I don't even know that they were in Seneca County that were um, correction letters to begin with and um, <coughs> they didn't realize that they were correction letters so they couldn't get started um, that we had to get figured out and they're like well I'm ready to start and it, it would would be holding me up so we had worked you know on that um, so okay but, my, my, but I, I mean I'm just saying I right. if my, they're not relaying that to us there's nothing that we can do to work with them if we don't know about so, it. So it's about communication, right? So my suggestion, mm -hmm. and it's your decision certainly, but my suggestion to you folks would be to uh, either virtually or in person invite the major, um, your major customers, your major, the, the mm -hmm. contractors that contact you the most with Sunday County and Tiffin, and maybe have a little bit of a, a, of a session uh, and let them explain sure. to you what their concerns are and maybe mm -hmm. you can come up with some resolutions. That, sure. If I were you, that's mm -hmm. what I would do at this point. Yes, and about a year ago, we did set up something um, in with Tiffin and we had a couple of the contractors there and talked with them at that, at that point. Um, and we have reached out. Um, I know you had some change in your economic development department because now he's with Crawford <laughs> um, right. reached out and said yeah. that we could do those you know on a more regular basis are you are you the new no he's, he's okay. Part of, um, he, not, okay he will be the next round 
but okay. <laughs> probably you can talk to him. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I had reached out to them and told them that, you know, anytime you just, like a lot of places, like, need speakers and stuff, you know, that we're always available and stuff like that. Um, so I'll do more, some more of that reaching out. Um, well, I don't know if there's, I'll ask them or if you know if there's any actual contractor associations. I know Ken has actually done some safety and code trainings with some of the yeah, um, Sunny County Builders contractors. They have, they have an annual event, okay. so I'm sure that I will. Can. I will reach out to them. Then. Yeah, and, and, and as you know, so, you know, perception mm -hmm. is reality. I'm just relating to you that the perception is that the wait times sure. are too long and that the change orders are too long. Now, true, untrue, I don't know, but I can tell you that's the uh, that's that's the concern. I um. I have 20 years of experience on the other side of the counter as a contractor. I'm a professional engineer, so you know I know that things can hold stuff on, and I also know that it's can never be fast enough. So, yeah. I mean, no, I, and I'm not saying that in a glib way. You're in a project, or you need to get something started. It's you know, that's that's where you are in the process, and that's what you need. So, I mean, I mean, I'm understanding both sides of of the thing, and yeah. well, I think it's all about communication. And I do know that the at this point in time, the perception is that the service isn't mm -hmm. good enough, um, and I don't know it would be better anywhere else, but I do know that right now that's the perception. I, I sure. concur with Commissioner Kirsten. I think that would, you would be proactive, and the way I would take my list is just look, pull your permits, just look at the permits that mm -hmm. came out of the city of Tiffin and Sankey County over the last year, look at the contract names that are on there. Sure. And then just organize and something. And if uh, Mr. Yeah. Gilmore back there with TSEP, which is uh, over the whole county economic yeah. development, he might be able to be your contact and get a venue and set something up. But sure. um, everybody's busy, but I'm sure you can figure out a way oh. to, uh, yeah. to meet with them. And I would just be proactive in it. And I think <laughs> like, sure. right, Commissioner Kirsten has a great idea there. Sure, and like I said, we have set up stuff <coughs> in, the, yeah. in the recent past, and we have had unofficial talks with like, you know, Klaus good. and those kind of, you know, those yeah. kind of contractors and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and I do know that in general, they always, at least what they tell me is that it's the review times, but in general, everything, they, the reviews aren't bad. It's just the, the times of the reviews, and call. they weren't even so much with the, yeah, that's why I said we've, we've talked with a lot, in more informal, like, hey, you know, are you guys, you know, what are you guys seeing? How's it, how's it going? Type thing, because we always appreciate the feedback. So, yeah, just my, my my final comment. I think Mike nailed a lot of it on the head. Um, I just we've got a lot of projects going on here in Seneca County between Faustoria, Tiff, and our rural areas. Um, the last few years, our county's been in the top ten for economic development. We just we can't have projects get them all jammed. Mm -hmm. I've seen both sides of the coin. So I've worked with Ken. <coughs> have, uh, sometimes it's an education factor. The new business owner or tenant don't always know what they're doing, and you can't mm -hmm. half-ass things. But it, I see both sides. But I think Mike nailed a lot of the stuff on the head. Um, going forward here, I guess we're just we want to communicate with you guys. We want to hear your side, mm -hmm. but not saying. Uh, we're gonna get married or keep walking down the path together, but we are shopping. So I just uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from. We just need to get things done. Ken, anything else from you? Mm, no. Yeah. Oh, well, one thing I would like to just say that uh, <laughs> we get a lot of calls from businesses in Tiffin and around, and they're like, "Hey, there's this can and." And I'll personally go up and walk through it and say, well, you know, you may need a design professional. You can go this route and this kind of thing. I, that I literally meet with people on site, you know, when they have questions. And we don't so charge it, for that. That's before just, they even get into the Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When they're considering it. We do, do try to do a lot of value added, for lack of a better term, items where, you know, like he's saying, he'll go up and meet with them yeah. and walk through buildings or walk them through on the phone or whatever what, that we don't charge for I mean I know I know some of the, like the plumbing departments charge for things like that I don't know what other building departments do but I, I know that we were mm -hmm. talking about that with the plumbing department the other day and they're like well we charge for those I'm like, you know, but so it helps the person <laughs> it helps <laughs> us so we're all on the same page right. you know well we do appreciate you coming yeah, yeah sure. thank you and I, and I do hope the best for you uh, you know it's been a good relationship for a lot of years uh, we just want to, you know, we want to make sure that the contractors are feeling comfortable with uh, the process. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we're not here to create anything. We're here to create an environment mm -hmm. that's a good environment for growth. Sure. And like, well, what we what we say now, um, it's is that we are under the Department of Commerce. We're in the business of commerce. We don't want the businesses to not open. We just want the employees and the customers to be safe in the business. Got it. Yeah. So absolutely. Thank you very good, much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. And um, you and can head out. <coughs> Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, commissioner reports. Commissioner Kirshner. Go with you. First. Yes. Uh, okay. I will yeah. begin. Uh, we'll go from uh, most recent to uh, backwards, I guess. Yeah. Last night we were all at the um, landfill meeting, the one landfill meeting, uh, quite a crowd. I don't know how many people were there. Three, four hundred? Three hundred? Anyway. 400, give or take. 400, give or take. Your guess? <coughs> no, that, but it doesn't. I, I can get you an exact number. Oh, yeah. Had sign, but I don't think everybody got signed in. Uh, but I'll, there I can watch it. Yeah. Sure. Um, we had a, um, uh, a presentation that was uh, pretty detailed as it relates to uh, what the structure of that landfill is, right? And then uh, it ended up with a number of questions. So, um, well, I'm sure we'll talk about something later here about that, but that's uh, that was uh, part of uh, part of the day. I also been part of uh, the process to interview and then hopefully hire a new TSEP director. Uh, it was taking uh, you know, a few hours. Just I understand it took about a period of time. Yeah. Uh, Good job on that. What's the sound so we'll see. Uh, we'll see when that final decision is made, but it'll be made soon. The the hope is to have the person in place very close to July 1st, so. So you're down to the final candidates? We actually were down to the final two, and okay. uh, if, uh, Good. I don't think I'm telling any stories out of school, I think one may have withdrawn. So, uh, we're close. yeah, sometimes you go from, you know, 10 to five to three to two to one to none, but right now we're, we're, uh, we're okay. having a discussion. So those Good. were the major issues for me this week. Great. Um, we had an investment uh, policy meeting, yeah. committee meeting, um, a couple of days ago, right, Stacy? And um, uh, to, it's a good committee. I want to thank uh, Paul Harrison. Uh, basically, some of it is just really hard work and focus to put ourselves in a position to uh, uh, make investments. And some of it is just dumb luck and the fact that interest rates are going up. Uh, I know Commissioner Kirshner, we've been on this for a long time, and about a month ago at our meeting when you were there, he asked for a follow-up meeting. And uh, so uh, since then, we've moved $25 million of county money into uh, instruments, short-term instruments that are going to yield over 2%. Um, and, you know, that's a lot of money. It, it was 2 point something. What was it, Stacy? $550,000. On an annual basis, set interest back to the county is five hundred fifty thousand just on that block of money. Yeah, I think, so I think the main point there. Yeah, well, your the, part for helping. Yeah, I appreciate that. Well. But the main point there is what you said that we you uh, kind of said quickly was short term. Yeah. Uh, so that we are, in a, as everybody knows, interest rates are rising. So that when the time comes and these things mature, that the duration of the portfolio is not so long that we can't be uh, that we can't be pretty fluid. And we'll be able to take advantage of higher bond rates as uh, as those rates start to increase. So hopefully, uh, Elaine from our uh, investment company uh, will we'll do kind of a laddered approach. So by, and by that I mean we'll get the rates that are today, uh, and then we'll get the uh, advantage of some of the rates tomorrow and then into the future. So at two percent, you know, we ought to be so able to up to actually. Yeah. yeah, we ought to be able to double that as time goes on as interest rates start to start to climb. You know, and that's just huge. Uh, that's just revenue. Um, so we also, and we've said this three times, I think, but this is appropriate for our investment committee. Um, we've eliminated our bank fees, and the county was paying approximately $10,000 a month in bank fees. And by closing a bunch of little accounts and combining them, and, and uh, so we saved 10000 a month in bank fees, and by um, some investment maneuvers, Kudos uh, to Paul Harrison. Yeah, I mean that could be another forty thousand a month plus an in income. So it's been a it's been a, a tremendous. Oh, 
two percent of taxes. Yeah, two percent of twenty-five million is half a million dollars a year. Yeah. That's significant yeah. money. Yeah. It's more, it was like five fifty-seven. Five hundred thousand here. Five hundred thousand there. Pretty soon it turns into real money, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, anyhow, that's all I have. I'll go to the commissioner of that. But I thought that was a pretty impactful meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, you guys can hear me. I got my voice back this week, so I'm happy about that. It's uh, lost lost my voice for a few days, so. Um, had a busy week here at the commissioner's office um, on t what was it Tuesday that we went out for yeah uh, so a splash of love from home they had a ribbon cutting out there at the uh, church in Bascom what they do is they make care packages for our veterans and uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen fighting for our freedoms overseas so got to volunteer there a few months ago but they had an official ribbon cutting and had a nice little reception down there so appreciate all that they do uh, for the community and for our folks overseas uh, good turnout at the uh, Micah Hyde football camp last Saturday. Great turnout. I don't know the exact, the exact numbers, but uh, uh, just it's nice to see local talent return home and pass some of that knowledge to our youth. So uh, kudos to uh, Micah, his family, and everybody that put that event on. Uh, also this week we had a board of revisions meeting. It's not one of my official committees, but I did get to sit in during that, uh, getting, getting to learn some of the newer committees that I'm not familiar with, but uh, productive meeting there. Like Commissioner Paradiso said, we had the investment committee this week as well. Um, went on WTTF this morning, gave some review or some updates as far as the uh, county corner goes. So I'm sure they'll post that up today. And I wanted to congratulate a few people. Um, I love driving through different towns, villages, and cities, and you see the state champs, and you, you know you got you got a That's awesome. talented area. Yeah. It seems like every few years we're putting more and more signs up. But uh, want to give uh, congratulations to the. Uh, Calvert uh, girls 4x200 team, uh, Cameron Shook, Caroline Lanasek, Leah Smith, and Emma White. Uh, those Calvert girls, whether it's volleyball or track, seems like they got a really strong class this year, so kudos to them. Uh, Hopewell, uh, Shuron Jones in the uh, 100, the 200, and the 400 meters. Uh, from Clyde, we got uh, Brady Wilson, 300 yard hurdles. And from Mohawk, we got Zayden Fry for uh, pole vaulting, and he's a repeat champion, so. Congratulations to our local high schools and their uh, athleticism. Looking forward to seeing some more signs go up, but uh, good week for Seneca County. Um, also want to congratulate Social, Social, Social Cigar opening up in downtown Tiffin. Uh, if you haven't got a chance yet, go in there and check it out. They had their ribbon cutting last week, which I was unable to attend, but really impressive what they've done with their storefront. Uh, Kit Teal, his investment in the building and the downtown. Just a, just a really neat shop inside. Um, so check it out. Uh, as the commissioner said, we also had the landfill meeting this week. Uh, very well attended. And then uh, last but not least, we have the Chamber of Golf outing today. So I'm gonna go out there and uh, meet some of our different businesses, do some networking. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this or not, Mike's a pretty humble guy and he won't say this, but I just found this out today. Mike, I seen in his office, he, he's got a placard up there where he got a hole in one. But come to find out, he's actually got two Hole in ones. You're holding he, he, he never, he never. I never knew this, but when was the second one? How many times in your life do you say, "Hey, I got a hole in one," much less two? So he'll, he'll never brag about it. But I'll do it for him. So hey, I knew about the one. How about Calvert? You have a ring. How about the Calvert baseball team? Aren't they? Uh, they're, they're still, still they're, 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 they're the final four, and then uh, yeah, yeah, they, that's what I thought. They played. They, let's wish them luck, and uh, yeah. Take the spotlight off. Yeah, very very nice. Good luck, Calvert, uh, boys yeah. baseball. So, yeah. that's end of my report. Okay, anything else? You good? I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to Stacy Wilson. Uh, the only thing, uh, just a reminder next week, no, no meeting next week. And then the following me, uh, following week, Monday uh, the 20th, we observe uh, the 18th. <coughs> so, we'll be closed on Monday the 20th. So, our next meeting will be the 23rd. Which is also our evening meeting, EMS meeting at seven o'clock. The twentieth is not in the teens. The nineteenth is the holiday, the official holiday. So it's on a Sunday. Uh, so we observe it on Monday. Good job, Fred. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a that was a new holiday that came in yeah. last year, and. Uh, so we've added that to our policy, and that will be we will be observing it on the 20th. Official dates. You know what? I did not know that till today. So. Oh, yeah, that was I a new holiday know, last year. You know, every day's a holiday. For me. Yeah. Every, <laughs> day's, <laughs> every evening's New Year's <laughs> Eve. So. Every day's so. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Just want to remind us about about that. Yep. That's it. Okay. Um, old business. <coughs> Down the line, anybody have any old business? And then we can maybe be good. Uh, do we want to talk a little bit about uh, the landfill, or do we want to wait till we get back to our resolution? Uh, we have some questions and things, right? Yeah, I think that you know we'll the decision was made. Bit. Jimmy's again a lot of hard work put a resolution <coughs> together, but we have not got approval <coughs> from um, uh, prosecutor. Uh, we want to make sure, as the mayor of uh, Australia has, that we are accurate in uh, everything that we say, and I think we are. He's got the work on that. But in light of last night's meeting, I do think it's probably appropriate that people have an opportunity to vent whatever their concerns are or add any positives they want over the next uh, period of time. Um, it's not a binding resolution, so there's, I don't think there's any timing issue with it. Everybody knows kind of where we're standing. I, I, Tyler, you said you might want to read some of it, or do you want to read all I of it? I do have it. I can read it for public knowledge, but like you said, pending uh, county prosecutor's approval, um, I'd like. I feel more comfortable if he looked it over as well. So yeah, yeah again, can, it is posted on our site. I think we're good. With yeah, um, I can post this. I mean, it's just changed a lot because from yeah. last week to now. I mean, I got feedback from a bunch of citizens. Ben from Sunny Farms reached out with a couple clarifications, so I was able to fix some things. Yeah, I think sure. if you make it clear that it's a draft, yeah, and it's all for review. That, uh, that uh, we can. Uh, yeah, we can have. I, I think maybe Tyler or Commissioner Shuff could read it, and then that that way, if you guys have any comments or direction for me, if you want me to make more changes to it, we could talk about that in the meeting right now. I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, give me a second here. It's a little lengthy, and uh, I guess I'm still getting my voice back. <laughs> He's the best order we have, anyhow. Um. So, in the matter of resolution to strongly oppose any expansion or growth of the Sunny Farms landfill. Whereas the Seneca County Commissioners, Mr. Anthony Paradiso, Mr. Mike Kirshner, and Mr. Tyler Schuff, met this 9th day of June 2022 in an open and regular session. And whereas noting that the Ohio Revised Code Section 3734.02 outlines rules for inspecting and licensing solid waste facilities, such as Sunny Farm Landfill, landfill located in Loudoun Township of Seneca County to ensure that the facilities will be located, maintained, and operated in a sanitary manner so as not to create a nuisance, cause, or contribute to water pollution, create a health hazard, or violate 40CFR 257.3-2 or 40CFR 257.3-8 as amended and whereas recognizing that when waste innovations the operator of sunny farm landfills has filed a permit to install application with the ohio environmental protection agency to expand the north unit of the landfill and whereas further recognizing that the expansion would significantly grow the footprint of the landfill both horizontally and vertically allowing for more waste to be accepted daily if the permit is approved by the Ohio EPA as submitted, it would increase the landfill's allowable daily intake from 7,500 tons to 12,000 tons, making it comparable with the intake currently allowed at Ohio's largest landfills. And whereas clarifying that the Seneca County Board of Commissioners has no direct authority over the regulation of the landfills, while also emphasizing the importance of timely action by the Ohio EPA. The Seneca County Health General Health District and any other regulatory authorities to ensure that the landfill complies with the state and federal rules and regulations. And whereas emphasizing the importance of health and safety to all of our residents and committing to working closely with the necessary agencies to ensure that citizens are protected from the harmful emissions and other potential hazards created by the landfill. And whereas noting that Sunny Farm Landfills was the ninth largest producer of sulfur dioxide in the state of Ohio in 2020, according to the Ohio EPA's statewide emissions inventory for 2020, with sulfur dioxide emissions significantly higher than what is allowed and compliant with landfills across the state. Whereas further noting that while improvements have been made over the past three years under the provisions of a 
partial consent order between the state of Ohio and the Ohio EPA and Sunny, Sunny Farm Landfill. The landfill will not continue will not continue into compliance with the Clean Air Act until mid 2023 at the earliest, which does not remediate the impact of high sulfur dioxide emissions over past decades on the environment. And resolved, this board strongly opposes any expansion or growth at Sunny Farm landfills and urges the landfill operators to make significant improvements in controlling emissions and completely mitigating potential harmful health effects at the landfill's current size. And resolved, this board respectfully requests that Wind Waste Innovations rescind its permit to install application for expansion of the North Unit until Sunny Farm landfills demonstrates compliance with the Clean Air Act and with all other state and federal rules and regulations as required of all waste facilities in the state of Ohio. And resolve this board supports and advocates the Ohio EPA and Seneca County General Health District to hold Sunny Farm Landfill accountable to the standards met by other landfills across the state through frequent inspections, any necessary enforcement actions, and the introduction of additional controls and safeguards to the facility to ensure compliance and consent orders and all state and federal rules and regulations with respect to the health and safety of Seneca County residents. Resolved, this board further recommends that the Seneca County Health District commit more funding and resources to environmental experts to ensure that Sunny Farm Landfill is compliant, not only with existing orders, but also with all state and federal rules and regulations for solid waste facilities. Getting going down towards the end here. Resolved, this board commits to working with Ottawa, Sandusky, and Seneca Joint Solid Waste Management District to closely examine current policies and enact new, more effective policies to hold the landfill accountable for being compliant with all state and federal rules and regulations, while also exploring all options to maximize community benefits from having the landfill. Resolved that it be found that and determined that all formal actions of this board concerning and relating to the adoption of this resolution were taken in an open meeting of this board and that all deliberations of this board and any of its committees that resulted in such formal actions were in a, were in a meeting open to the public and in compliance with the law. Commissioners Paradiso, Kirshner, and Schuff. Yeah, I, again, uh, you know, we do we want to make certain that we're stating, whatever we're stating is exact, uh, correct, uh, and not too much insinuation to make sure that the council reviews it and uh, doesn't put this board in harm's way by passing any such resolution. Okay, so I think uh, we'll just move on from that. Uh, that's posted. Jimmy, you've received <coughs> You put the first draft out a week ago, received uh, feedback. Quite a lot. Besides, we've, yep. you've talked to uh, others, right? I um, haven't given you any of my comments yet, but I think we're we're getting close. So we'll uh, have Derek review this. And we'll, we're off next week. We'll take a following week, I guess. Unless anybody objects. Good. Okay. Um, we'll move into uh, new business. Uh, Stacy, back to you. Okay, I have a supplemental appropriation request from the sheriff's office. This is from their uh, CASA fund to do $4,102.50 into salaries, $15,000 into contract services, $72.50 for Medicare, $125 into workers' comp, and $700 into PERS. And you took my resolutions. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Read I thought you already had them no. on there. <laughs> well, they're on my agenda, but I like to read it from the resolution. All sorry. right, then. Uh, resolution extending <coughs> sub grant agreement with the Greater Ohio Workforce Board on behalf of the Seneca County Department of Job and Family Services. They'd like to extend it for another two years. Um, I have a resolution authorizing the 2022 2023 technical specialized counseling agreement with local government services LLC on behalf of the Seneca County Auditor retroactive to June 3rd 2022 uh, this is the same one she does every year uh, let's see what the amount is uh, $5,100 uh, my 
tonight. A resolution uh, ordering the establishment of no throw trucks routes of various roads effective immediately. I think this uh, has everything to do with the um, uh, um, ODOT doing the roundabout. Roundabout, roundabout. So what is Mark is asking for is uh, the board has received a letter from the engineer requesting County Road 7 between State Route 18 and County Road 591, County Road 18 between County Road 7 and US 23, Township Road 108 between US 23 and Township Road 66, Township Road 59 between State Route 587, Township Road 100, Township Road 66 between Township Road 102 and County Road 18. And I know you guys gonna all remember all these. <laughs> Township Road 100 between State Route 587 and Township Road 59 be formally established as no truck, no through truck routes for the duration of the US 224 and State Route 587 roundabout construction because of the concern regarding the additional traffic volumes and safety on said roads. So are we going to post that, uh, post that on these roads? Do we know? Yes. Okay. Yep. Do we have any say or anything that, with, with the roundabout, I mean, people, it seems like a lot of people don't really care for the idea, like it, or want I mean, do we have, mm -hmm. can they basically just do whatever they want and just... They had their public hearings that were required and, um, you know, I don't know what that finalized as, but clearly they're moving forward with it. I think oh, they, they start with, they mentioned it, I think, at the meeting last week, that June 13th they were going to be starting. I just don't ever seen anything pop Yeah. Mm -hmm. it just it seemed like online, just seemed like a lot of people weren't really impressed with it or like the idea or concept, but. Uh, yeah, I think we brought it up to them last week. And yeah. They said it. Less it's fatalities. One, it's one of our two projects. <laughs> we would have rather had the money spent somewhere else. That's for the answer. <laughs> uh, I'll second that. Just for the record, I did spend time with uh, President Schumacher and Tara talking about the mountain. He just shook his head. <laughs> so, did he want that or no? It, it happened before he came. Well, they mentioned another around about a three-way stop, and I, I, I believe them. But I don't think there's another one in the why country. Was, that's great. So why would you Why would you put a roundabout at a three-way stop? Is way beyond comprehension. I always see tire tracks yeah. going over like the island Did portion. You know the one for the turnpike that they just put in. That that's unbelievable. Yeah. There was coming back from the no, no, on 53. Yeah, on 53, yeah. run by Terra there. The one by Terra. Well, I know you're talking about the one by Terra, oh, but there's there's a, I was just another. saying that I wonder, isn't that a three way stop? The, the 53? That could be that, but that would be the only yeah. other one that I'm, that I'm aware of. Is it true or is it not true that um, the. Uh, Sorry, States, we interrupted you. Yeah, oh, that's okay. The highway <laughs> split on 53 North by the Fremont Airport. Is that actually one intersection short of what they wanted it? That's what I've always heard, that somebody had the map upside down yeah. or something. Yeah, I mean, supposedly <laughs> that split was <laughs> supposed, supposed to be at six. Makes so, sense that it would be. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, you know, the committee constructed it's an intersection <laughs> two generations ago for no particular reason. And then they put a roundabout down further to make up for it, I guess. <laughs> uh, On the other side, yeah. Uh, Four years later. <laughs> Anyway, smart Stacy, Stacy, back to you. <laughs> that, 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 that is all I, I have. That is all I have. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, <laughs> pass and accept the new business, the supplemental appropriations as presented. I will second. Okay. Commissioner Kirshner? I say yes. Commissioner Schaff? Yes. Commissioner Paradiso? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Before we open up to public comment, I had a thought about Commissioner Kirshner's uh -oh. hole in one. So, <laughs> if you think about it, I just have a, I have a thought. So do we Dave, do this out of session here? Or we do that? No, we're, we're in session. Uh, this is important. <laughs> we're in public comment. So, I bet you that Ben has had more than one hole in one. <laughs> what, what the fuck? I have not. Babe Ruth, when he retired, had more home runs than anybody else, right, Jimmy? He also had more strikeouts than anybody else. So when you get two hole in ones, what that means to me is you just play a lot of golf. Yeah. <laughs> I was kind of thinking you that. You just keep playing and playing and playing. And you get enough reps. That is exactly what I got a hole in three one time. I think that's it. It's kind of like being a commissioner. If you say enough and talk enough over here, you'll probably be right once or twice. <laughs> I don't, know, to, I don't know if I've got it yet. But yeah. So. 
That said, public comment. Kayla. You good? Thank you. Yep. We'll start left to right. Yeah, I've got the little one. Uh, I figured the big one uh, is oh boy. important today. We're I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> trying to impress awesome. the a new boss, whoever it might be. Yeah, they, they monogrammed it. It's like, wow. wow. That's uh, is luxury. Your name, is your name on it or just? It a, is. Wow. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, not as impressive as two holes in one. <laughs> but, you know, that was good. I'll was take good. it. That was impressive. <laughs> Uh, so, just a quick couple updates. Uh, obviously, Amy, our downtown director, wants me to uh, obviously remind everyone once again about Third Thursday coming up next week um, on June 16th. That is going to be a celebration of Tiffin's Bicentennial. This year is the 200th anniversary or 200th year since the founding of Tiffin, and so they are celebrating it in quite a uh, impressive fashion this year. This is probably going to be the largest Third Thursday that has ever taken place in downtown Tiffin. There will be a car show, some first responder vehicles that kids can visit in the parking lots, music at the Frost Countdown Amphitheater, as well as a bunch of other events taking place in downtown that day. That is also the Heritage Ohio Quarterly Revitalization Seminar. Uh, as Tiffin is a Main Street community, our residents are able to get free access to that seminar, which is going to be about engaging with local legislators and on how to preserve downtown and really or preserve your historic centers and make that a better place, a more livable place for a modern generation at the same time through that engagement. So if you are interested in that free registration, you can contact Amy Reinhart in our office. Her information is on our website for that if you are at all interested. Is that, um, the, that's, is that the 17th? The, the, the 16th. 16th, okay, so because there is a uh, elected official round table on the morning of the 17th too, I think that's Yes, so there's there are some events happening on the 17th related to Her the Heritage Ohio Festival, but that actual seminar is going to be taking place, I believe, in the I'm not sure exactly when on the 16th, but it, there is some information. So it's not the that. 17th. It's it is not on the 17th. Yeah, that's that's right because they asked if I could speak or one of us could speak and would be gone. So what time right. does the event start? Is it five? Yeah. For third Thursday, for third Thursday. yeah, that'll be that starts. I believe at five. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's kind of early. It was an early morning, sixteenth thing. None of us will be there. Yeah. Uh, and then, importantly, we are finally reaching the end of our search for our new president and CEO, and we're going to have an announcement here relatively soon regarding that. So keep your eyes peeled. I think the choice is going to be pretty uh, make a lot of people very happy. Uh, we're very confident in their abilities to, you know, continue to lead our organization and take it and continue a bright direction. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. Anybody else on this side? Before Tom's got something I can tell by look on his face. I just got a comment. Sure. About the landfill. And I didn't hear much about this last night. Eons from now, that's going to, could, put a lot of burden on Seneca County, on the new commissioner at that time. So that is going to, <coughs> that's going to fail. It's going to create problems somewhere down the line. It won't be in my lifetime. It won't be in the kids' lifetime. Grandkids, maybe, or their kids, but it will fail and cause problems. Do I know what kind of problems? No. Does anybody know what kind of problems? I don't think so. But I agree with you, what you're doing. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? And this that be good? And kind of good? Okay. We promise we won't boo. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, you'll hear from me again. <laughs> well, I, I just, I love the, the process of people coming out and business, everybody. Voice and their concern. Yeah, you just got to get it out there. And um, I thought, I thought it was good. Jimmy, we are open it up. Um, yep. Uh, we do have 18 people with us here on Zoom. Uh, okay. So if you are joining us on Zoom, and you'd like to come forward and make a comment here during the public comment section of the meeting, you can do that now. Mike Ditto on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You missed him. Mike? He's off mute. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Thanks Mike. for the opportunity. 
I, uh, I told Stacy we'd be happy to request some official House and Senate commendations on the historic occasion of Commissioner Kirshner's two holes in the Why? They may not grant that, but by God, we're going to try. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no. Again, thanks for the opportunity this morning. Uh, well, you know, when Adam Dan was alive, we could get we could get federal uh, recognition and get a flag flown wherever we wanted. I don't know. We <laughs> That's true. Very good point. <laughs> um, but as, as you know, the legislature is out of session right now. Uh, that does not mean that the business of state government is ending. Uh, you, you'll see your legislators a lot more, I think, in Seneca County and throughout their districts. Uh, the, the big thing coming up now is the for the legislature, the August 2nd primary election uh, that is happening all across the state in all legislative districts. Uh, Senator Reineke is not on the ballot this year. I don't believe Representative Click has an opponent. Um, so it will be a, a light ballot uh, in Seneca County, uh, if anything. Uh, the other thing that we're going to be working on is uh, starting some initial uh, review and conversations of some of the uh, federal money that's going to be still coming down to the states in the summer months. Uh, now that Congress is also about to be out of session, uh, if some of those grants will be available and opportunities there for Seneca County, of course, we will let you know. Um, and we will certainly be around for any and everything that pops up. So if there's something that we can do to be helpful to all of you, please don't hesitate to ask if we're ready to help. Uh, Mike, the thing that I forgot to mention today was I met with the North Central Electric uh, earlier in the week, and uh, I think Tyler did too, Antonio previously, but uh, uh, as it relates to broadband, is there uh, a big chunk of money coming from the federal government that, um, uh, that will be sent to the uh, Department of Development that uh, will be dispersed to the counties? We believe so, and that your timing on that question was perfect. Uh, I'm actually meeting with the Executive Director of Broadband Ohio in about two weeks when he gets back from a couple of conferences uh, to talk about that very thing. Uh, we, he and I are uh, longtime colleagues, and we were at a mutual event the other day, and he mentioned that, uh, that there may be some other opportunities for local governments on that very front. So I will get some information from him on that in the weeks ahead and share that with you because it's still expanding the residential broadband program that the state of ohio deployed uh last year is still up and running but it is it is at least expected at this point that more money more money may be coming down the pipe yeah that's, that's everybody anticipates you know i know for sunday county i think we're talking about a number whoever gets to bed uh i think the final uh final analysis is due july one or so all of our study yeah yeah, yeah. so i mean it so looks like the number july. 17 million and, Whoever, the whole county. Yeah, yeah and whoever, like uh, whoever might be awarded that, um, you know, is asking the county to make certain that they put some money aside because if that grant opportunity comes, as you know, uh, from historical grant, uh, when, they, when they grant folks that money, um, mm -hmm. the, the more, the higher percentage that, that the local government has, the more likely you are to receive funds. So we right. just, we kind of need to know from a, you know, from uh, uh, American Rescue Plan standpoint, is there anything that we should seriously consider putting aside? <coughs> you know, will it be of some assistance to us to get a bigger grant for that broadband? For sure. We'll do a little digging on that in the weeks ahead and report back to you as soon as we know. Okay. Good. Thank you. That's all. Stay right now. Cool. Anyone else uh, joining us online who'd like to speak during public comment, go ahead and unmute now. Don't see it. Okay. So, Stace, when's our next meeting? 23rd. 23rd. That'll be a busy day. Um, and uh, so we'll call today's meeting adjourned, and we'll see everybody on the 23rd.